Coming up on this week's news, a fake electrician who claimed to be NIC EIC approved has been caught carrying out complete rewires of homes and offices. Tragedy strikes as a mother of three is electrocuted in the bath. And solar installers are warned, get netting on your panels to beat the birds. Welcome to Electrical News Weekly, whether you're listening in the van, on site or down at the wholesale counter. I'm Joe Robinson and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news to save you the trouble. This week, the recording studio is being powered by our friends over at Consumer Unit World with high stock levels of your favourite consumer units, including BG and free next working day delivery on orders over 150 quid. We're being lit by Flex 7 with their lightning fast pre-wired modular lighting connection system that keeps your installation times razor sharp and if you think you've spotted the two words that i've been challenged to slip into this week's show comment with them below for the chance to win a prize and while you're there click the links to check out what our sponsors offer a fake electrician who claimed to be registered with the nic eic did complete rewires of homes and offices in wales it's been revealed wayne phillips ran a business called wjp electrical even though he was not qualified and not a member of the organization swansea crown court heard that phillips's work was shoddy in the extreme and potentially dangerous. The bogus tradesman conned his customers out of thousands of pounds for work from a full rewiring of a building through to the installation of a shower and lights. He left behind him a host of problems which his victims had to pay to put right. The judge described Phillips as the epitome of a rogue trader. One job involved a complete rewiring of a form of vet surgery in Swansea which was being converted into a house. Phillips charged the customer more than £6,000 for the job. The court heard there were a number of problems with the work including issues with the wiring of power sockets and the job was never completed despite the customer continually chasing the defendant via texts. Another job was the installation of a shower for which the defendant charged more than £3,000. The work was described as being extremely poor with the shower tray resting on two loose planks. Additionally there was no tanking around the shower and nothing to stop water from the shower leaking directly into electrical components. Additionally the customer said that Phillips had used the wrong kind of connectors to fit pipes to the house's combi boiler. The householder had to get in a gas safe registered engineer to put the work right. Phillips had previously pleaded guilty to six offences under the Fraud Act, including failing to disclose he was not a qualified electrician and dishonestly making use of the NIC EIC logo on his written quotations. The judge likened Philip to someone with an A-level in biology claiming to be a doctor. He sentenced him to 30 months in prison, suspended for two years and 200 hours of community work. In other news, a mother of three has been electrocuted in the bath while charging a mobile phone. Anne-Marie O'Gorman was found dead at her home in Santry, County Dublin, by her husband Joe. He found her unresponsive with her iPhone and a three-metre cable partially in the water. The cable was plugged into the bedroom next door. Irish state pathologist Heidi Ockers said Ms O'Gorman had electrocution-type burns to her chest and left arm, as well as full-thickness burns to her right index finger and thumb. Consultant engineer Paul Collins said he believed the phone had fallen in the water and in trying to retrieve it, Ms O'Gorman's right hand came into contact with the shower attachment. This completed the circuit and allowed current to pass through her body. He said a current of two amps, which is typical for chargers, was more than enough to kill a person. If she had not taken her hand out of the bath, she would probably still be alive, he said. Joe O'Gorman told the inquest he wanted a message to go to the public about the danger of charging mobiles in bathrooms. He said warnings about such a hazard should be displayed prominently on the packaging of all electronic devices. Our sincerest condolences to the friends and family of Ms O'Gorman. That is just too sad. Now, should you use netting to stop pigeons interfering with solar panel installations? That's the recommendation of Renfrewshire Council in Scotland. It wants installers to prevent birds getting access to the rear of the panels. The council says that because pigeons carry diseases, it strongly recommends that the gap between the solar panel and the roof line should be sealed off with either mesh or netting. Councillor Colin McCulloch said it was important to stop the birds getting in in the first place because once they roost under the panels, it's a breach of wildlife legislation to move them. Meanwhile, in Colchester, residents of blocks of flats are in a flap over over pigeons nesting under their PV panels. One resident of Nancy Smith Close says the pigeon problem has become so bad that she has to wear a hat while in the communal garden to protect herself from bird poo. It appears the installation was protected by netting, but it turned out to be as effective as Gary's attempt to grow a ponytail because the birds are apparently able to dip under it. The council says it's now stopped using netting and is exploring alternative solutions. One innovation they could try has been developed and made by a company in Surrey. Solar Skirt is a linear edging which can be attached to a panel to block off the gap between between it and the roof line. As it's made from aluminium, it's UV and weather resistant and it also hides the cables and connectors from view. However, if the problem is bird poo on the PV panels, a French company has the answer. 
drones. It has developed a quadcopter for cleaning solar panels. The Chandos unmanned aerial vehicle comes with a high pressure water spray attachment and 25 meter hose. Its twin nozzles spray at a pressure of 110 bar. The drone can reach heights of 50 meters and is said to have excellent maneuverability. It can wash up to 500 square meters of panels in an hour. In other product news, NextBlue has unveiled its latest charger for domestic jobs. The Point 2 has adaptive power from 1.4 to 7.4 kilowatts and is compatible with all UK earthing systems. It has penfold protection built in, as well as 30 smart sensors to ensure safety. The firm reckons it takes just four minutes to install. You commission it instantly by using the contactless facility of your phone while running the app. It's compatible with all major UK energy tariffs and connects to the world using either a data cable, Wi-Fi or 4G eSIM. For the commercial charging market, NextBlue has unveiled the Delta Max. It shares many of the features of the Point 2 and has a maximum rating of 22 kilowatts. The company is also marketing a pre-installed docking system for its chargers. Dubbed NextBlue Ready, this wall-mounted product acts like a buzz bar and provides power to a number of chargers. You can also install backplates with blind covers for future upgrading. It's designed for applications such as secure parking spaces in apartment blocks. A special lighting control module which combines DALI with the wireless control system Kasambi has won a prestigious Build Back Better award. The MDCC 12 12C from Metway has a special integral Kasambi module which converts its commands to DALI so that it can talk to DALI fittings. The unit has a 12 luminaire output configuration with two dedicated mains outputs for powered sensors or switches. It combines wired solutions for power distribution with an integrated wireless node. Installation is plug and play, reducing on-site time to a minimum. Now, how about this for an innovation that's really impressed the team here at eFix? It's a special tool for threading steel conduit. This task currently takes absolutely a is using a stock and die set, but a development from Holemaker Technology is set to change all that. You first use a beveling tool on the steel tube, then you connect the threader tool set to your impact driver. You put the tool on the end of conduit, pop some tapping fluid in, and start the drill. It will make the thread effortlessly in about eight seconds. It's worth checking the catalogue to confirm your impact driver is up to the task, and from now until the end of October, if you order via their website, you'll get 20% off. Holemaker Technology are working with CEF to fulfil orders, so don't be surprised when they get involved with your order. I think that's just an incredible bit of kit that will speed up installation time no end. I want one. Weira has introduced its new 23-piece Craftform Compact VDE Safe Talk Speed Set and it's an extensive kit featuring two VDE Torque drivers, the 7508 and 7516, each with five selectable tightening torques ranging from 0.4 to 2.0 Newton meters for the 7508 and 2.4 to 4.0 Newton meters for the 7516, plus a torque lock function that allows for normal tightening and loosening without the torque setting kicking in. Both include a reliable slip-over mechanism for accuracy. Also included are 20 colour-coded VDE blades with reduced diameters for easy access to recessed screws and an 817 blade holding screwdriver, all neatly packed in a robust textile box. All in all, torque settings made simple. Another tool we love here is the Viper Clip, a cable stapler for securing twin and earth and fire resistant cables. And like all the best bits of kit, it's been designed for the electrician by an electrician. The tool uses preloaded clips that are fired into place, avoiding the need for manual hammering. It's intended to speed up the process of fixing cables to surfaces while maintaining consistent spacing and secure fastening. The mechanism is spring powered and reloads quickly, allowing multiple clips to be fitted in succession. Each clip holds the cable firmly without crushing or damaging the installation. Gary and Joe loved it when they got their mitts on one for a bench test. I've popped a link to the video in the show notes. Testing expert Fluke says it's really important to use the correctly rated kit for solar jobs. It says knowing which category and voltage ratings are needed can make the difference between a safe project and one fraught with risk. Cat ratings reflect the tool's ability to withstand transient high voltage spikes. For photovoltaic arrays, industrial kit or three-phase jobs, you'll need a Cat 3 tester. A 600 volt Cat 3 will suffice for residential rooftop installs, but for commercial projects, you'll need the 1000 volt version. It's no surprise that Fluke has shed loads of options covering all the bases. For household jobs, there's the 117 multimeter, which is rated Cat 3 600 volts, and ideal for troubleshooting lower voltage systems. Complementing that in the Cat 3 600 volt format is the 325 clamp meter. Next up is the T6 1000 tester, which as you've guessed is rated at 1000 volts and so is suitable for small commercial solar inverter outputs. In the same rating is also a multifunction PV tester and performance analyzer and an insulation multimeter. Now it's that great moment where we get to celebrate the sterling work being done by the next generation. Our learner of the week is brought to you by El Taco.
Echo, German manufacturer of premium actuators, sensors and energy meters for smart homes. And our learner this week is Zuriel Smith-Wright, who has just become an apprentice electrician at EV Made Easy, a family-owned electric contracting business in Ipswich. He secured his apprenticeship after dedicating two years to studying at New Suffolk College. What makes this particularly exciting is the opportunity for someone so young to gain hands-on experience in such a rapidly growing and important area of green technology. It's a fantastic step forward for his career and it highlights how education can open the door to emerging opportunities. Congratulations, Uriel, on being the eFix Learner of the Week in association with El Taco. Now, if you're looking to break into the industry, we can help. eFix has set up a dedicated LinkedIn group for people training in electrical installation. It's aimed at apprentices, full-time learners and adults training in the evening. Just log on to LinkedIn and search for UK Electrician Apprenticeships and Career Support. I'll also put a link in the show notes. And if you ever feel like you're swimming breaststroke against the current and getting nowhere in your job search in the electrical industry, another place to head to when you're looking for a job is Tradesboard. It's a website set up by electrician and lecturer Thomas Fluitt in response to the age-old clamour from his learners on how they can get a job and progress into the industry. Thomas created his own answer and built Tradesboard, a platform which brings companies and candidates together. If you're a job hunter, you can showcase your skills, experience, qualifications and also upload your CV. If you're a contracting firm, you can post jobs and search for potential hires by trade, experience, qualifications and location. I'll pop the link in the show notes, so check it out and keep up the good work, Thomas. And now to the lighter side of the electrical news. Yes, it's time for a tea break with Quickwire and its range of incredibly rapid electrical connectors. There's been a blackout in the Irish Parliament and it came at the most appropriate moment possible, right in the middle of a debate on the cost of living crisis. As the room was plunged into darkness, lit only by emergency lighting, one member of Parliament quipped, Have you paid electricity bill, Minister? The power in Leinster House continued to flick on and off throughout the day as staff worked to address the issue. The reason for the outage was later revealed to be a network problem, not an unpaid bill after all. That's the lighter side of the news in our tea break with Quickwire and their range of incredibly rapid electrical connectors. Click the link in the description to check them out for yourself. And now in sporting news, we're going over to the John Motson of the electrical industry. It's Joe 2.0 with the latest update on the eFix Fantasy Football League. Game week seven is over and out, and for many managers, it was a week to enjoy. Semenyo stole the headlines with a huge 18 points, and luckily, I'd just transferred him in, so for once, I was on the right side of an FPL haul. The average score across the league was 60 points, which is a nice bump compared to some of the painful weeks we've had. There were big movers all over the place, so let's get into the action. First up, the Marshall Tuflex team of the week goes to Unai's Angels, Chris Onions, with a massive 99 points. Just one short of breaking the century mark. That's a cruel finish line to stop at. What really stands out is that six of his players hit double figures. Well done, Chris. Weeks like that don't come around often, so enjoy it while you can. Next up, the Fusebox Flyer of the Week goes to, now I'm a believer, Chris Greenhouse, who scored 92 points and shot up 87 places in the table, landing in 119. That's the kind of jump that turns heads, and more importantly, annoys the managers around him who thought they had some breathing room. One or two more game weeks like that and he'll be knocking on the top 100. Next up, the EV Blocks Defence of the Week goes to Scott Temple, whose backline racked up an impressive 35 points. Gabriel and Gradio both came good, and that gave him the kind of solid platform most managers could only dream of. We've seen in this league that a strong defence can be the difference between a steady week and a standout one, and Scott proved that here. Reliable, robust, and holding firm. Finally, it's time for the TIS Transfer of the Week. Looking ahead, my recommendation is Anton Stack. Leeds have a great fixture run coming up and Stack looks like he's already cementing himself as a key player. He's getting into the right positions, he looks busy on the ball and he's exactly the kind of player who can quietly rack up consistent FPL points. If you're looking to strengthen your midfield, he's one to keep on the radar. Of course, transfers are always a gamble, so don't come crying to me if he blanks. That's the highlights from Game Week 7 in the EFIX Fantasy League. Thanks again to our brand partners for backing the fun every week. And don't forget to enter the draw for the Nipex Tool of the Week. The link's in the description. Until next time, may your captains actually play, may your benches be stacked, and may Leeds continue to disappoint Rick. Another great update from Joe there. And just before we get to your favourite bit of the show where I reveal last week's challenge words and winners, we want to thank our premium partners. We couldn't make the news without you. First up, for all your circuit protection needs, they're like having an Italian star striker in your premiership team. It's Ludum Palazzoli. With their new award-winning Lumo Consumer Unit and offering complete product support from their highly trained team, it's CPN Qdis. And with over 5,000 product lines from heating, lighting, ventilation to wiring accessories, if you need it, they've got it. It's electrical distributor CED Group. 
Group. And the best thing to come out of Yorkshire since stainless steel, the home of EV Ultra and other groundbreaking and quality products, it's Doncaster Cables. Click the links in the show notes to find out more about these great brands. If you think you know the words that I've smuggled into this week's show, pop your guess into the comments. We'll take all the correct guesses and select one at random to be the winner of an eFix goodie bag prize. Answers submitted after about lunchtime on the Thursday after release will not be entered into the draw. Now let's reveal the winner of last week's challenge word competition. Last week's words were anglophonic and ketchup. And we've got another repeat winner, regular viewer and commenter Dave Frizzell 3882, as well as Enquirer After Our Health, which is rare and appreciated. So well done, Dave. Click the Get Involved link in the show notes to claim your prize. This week, the recording studio has been powered by our friends over at Consumer Unit World. With high stock levels of your favourite consumer units, including BG and free next working day delivery on orders over 150 quid. And we've been lit by Flex 7 with their lightning fast pre-wired modular lighting connection system that keeps your installation times razor sharp. Don't forget to click the links in the show notes to find out more. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Weekly. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening and... Until next time, have a great week. Stay safe out there. And remember, there's no such thing as a torque calibrated arm.